Hello everyone, Marco Levet here. Wow, you know, Nagalia from Womel Magazine. Womel, the mother of Womely Magazine. We got together the 1st of March and she decided we are going to salute 25 powerful women. A lot of women, they do their hat in the ring, but these women had to have a deep digital and print and print footprint. So yesterday we brought women before you. We have another group today, equally powerful. I feel the power in the room here today. So Nagalia is working the back of this uh, awesome event. And it is a event. It's not just a panel discussion. So buckle up. I want to tell you first about this fabulous magazine and this company. Well, Mel is a woman-owned company that brings women together from across the globe to share ideas and provide guidance to help us all achieve our collective and individual goals. Womel launched in 2016 by Nagalia to help small business women, startups, and mompreneurs who share the same frustrations and limitations, and that's to build successful businesses. Womel supports women through mentorship, knowledge, services, and Wom Lead Magazine, which is a print and digital prop publication focusing on women in business and leadership. You can visit www.womelle.com to learn more. So today's conversation, and that is exactly what it is, a conversation. I'll introduce these ladies in no particular order. I have Nayela Amaru. Nayela is an advocate, a political strategist, sought out political commentator. And when we had our conversation, she really helped me understand the wheels of how this United States government works. I really appreciate that. Aruna Krishnan. Aruna is a podcaster, sister podcaster. She is an author, entrepreneur. And when we had our conversation, she opened up my eyes to the importance of emotional intelligence. And then there's Trina Ramsey. Trina, hello. She is the executive coach, founder of Just Do You Institute. And with us women over 40, she is a guiding light and a fresh breath, I can tell you. When our conversation was dynamic. Tracy L. James, hello, hello. She is an author, business growth strategist, former dancer, probably still dances around the house. But what I love is that she does not accept any excuses. Excuses are the seedbed for solutions. And then we have Monica Glenny. Monica. Monica is an advocate, a mentor for women building a lucrative global business. And that's Mary Kay Global. But she's coming from mentoring. She's able to mentor with 20 plus years coming from the data and accounting industry. So what a conversation we had. And then we have Maggie Georgiopoulos. I call her the global mental health advocate, wherever she is. That is what her conversation is all about. So as you can see, we have a rich, a full, a diverse team here. And we are going to talk about how women can succeed in 2021. So welcome, ladies. Are you ready to get started? All right. Yes. Welcome everyone in the audience for joining us today. The stats tell us that over 2 million women for various reasons when the pandemic hit, they left the workplace. So as women of influence, women with a deep and abiding and forward moving footprint, how do we reach these ladies and help them? Does everyone want help? We're going to discuss that. But first, how do we help? What do we have to offer? Monica, will you, will you lead this conversation out, please? I'd be happy to, Margo. Thank you. I just, I think right now, in spite of the pandemic, we have such a wealth of opportunity for women. I was doing some research earlier today about funding for women 
And there is so much money available for women in business right now, whether they would like to start it, like my business, a direct selling business, which has a very low investment entry investment, or whether they would like to purchase an, uh, an existing business, buy a franchise, um, or freelance on their own. There's just a plethora of money available and resources available for women. So it's it's really exciting. I think it's, you know, we hear the doom and gloom about the pandemic, but I think it's really an exciting time for women. I do too. I agree. Thank you for letting us know about the money that's uh, available. Aruna, what say you about this? How, how can we help these women? Yeah, so I kind of want to tell a personal story because I was one of the women that was let go at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, I was thinking about this and some of the key themes there is the first thing is mindset, right? So when we get let go, there's a lot of this thinking about why me and kind of thinking about failure. So I think before even they can launch themselves it's like make sure your mindset is in the right place so helping and coaching them with saying that it's not you it's just a circumstance and then uh for me what happened was it actually opened up my eyes to what can i do next so i was in corporate for 15 plus years and then it's like okay now it's my opportunity because obviously there's there's not enough jobs in in the regular market what can I look into? How can I use my skills and how can I help people? And um, so in that case, like use your skills to launch a business that you already have that skill set with and bring it to other people, help them learn. So be open to change because that's something that people are scared of, but be open to change. And what's going to enable that is supporting yourself with a network. So there are a lot of networks out there like eWomen Network, uh, the uh, Polkadot Powerhouse. Those are just a couple of examples, but I would say that's critical. Mindset, open to change and getting yourself uh, help associating with the network. Sounds like you're mirroring where I was when I came out of corporate. You can't do this alone. Reinvention is big and it's scary and you have to reach out to others. So Nyella, what do you think? Where are we at as far as a political strategist? What do you say? Um, so I'm gonna answer this uh, through two lenses. Um, first, I'm gonna talk about it through the lens of those of us who are in privileged positions where we, um, you know, uh, are in the hiring positions. Um, I think is to, you know, challenge ourselves and to challenge uh, other folks who are in hiring positions um, to remove the pandemic gap year bias, right? You know, I think before this year, you know, there was a negative connotation if anyone had a gap in the resume, right? And so there was always this built-in expectation um, to camouflage it somehow, um, or you know, to try and make sure that the that that gap in the resume was as small as possible, because there is this assumption that people with resume gaps uh, may be ambitious or lacking skills, and also have a lower chance of receiving interviews than those who are currently employed. Um, so that would be number one through the lens of people who are in positions. Um, uh, to hire, um, you know, the women coming back in is to check ourselves for that pandemic gap year bias and understand that that is not a reflection of uh, the woman or any individual. Um, for the individual women who are looking to come back into the post-pandemic job market, um, I would say, I think, to build off of Runa's point, um, you know, in terms of how we view ourselves or, um, is, I think it's going to be even more crucial for women to really take ownership of um, their careers, right? Um, and I think it's an interesting um, opportunity to you know, question whether the companies that they may be interested in working for um, are truly deserving of them, right? And so I would encourage women um, who are you know, on the job hunt um, you know, to understand and research what's happening at the top of those organizations that you're interested in before you apply. Because if you're looking for your employer, you're not necessarily looking for perfection, but you're looking for progress, right? And if you as a woman do not see yourself represented in the leadership of the organization that you are interested in 
sharing your time, talent, and treasure with, um, and you don't see that they're actively trying to work towards that, um, then I would definitely encourage women to look elsewhere. Um, so again, I think for those of us who were in hiring positions of, to help women transition back into the workforce, check the gap year bias um, that has always been an issue um, and hopefully will not be as much as an issue since many, many people um, coming out of 2020 will have that gap. Um, understand what the root cause of that is um, and to not make assumptions about someone's value because of it. Um, and two, for the women who are on the job hunt, um, you know, again, just be intentional about the organizations and businesses and firms that you're applying to and making sure that um, you're, you are represented in the leadership or the organization is trying to work towards better representation, um, you know, or else you, 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 you may have a job, but you will still not have a, a, a career um, because, mm -hmm. the op, because the firm or the business or the organization does not necessarily uh, value the skills that you're bringing to the organization. Wow. That's powerful. So check and own your power. Know whether you want a job or do you want a career and that company that you're applying for, applying to, how are they worthy of you? That's what I hear you say. All places of employment are not worthy of you as an employee. That's a wonderful and new thought. We're going to circle back to that. We are, uh, you, you woke something up in me about that. Oh, we're going to we're gonna have more conversation on that. Trina Ramsey, what do you yeah. say? Oh my gosh, it's really interesting, the thread that's happening here. Because like Aruna, I also was uh, part of the statistic of 2020. And for me, it was kind of like a double-edged sword because I had actually relocated to the Bay Area from Washington, D.C. for a job in 2019. And it just um, literally kind of like this ricochet throughout the year. And so for me, part of what uh, I decided was it was time for me to invest in myself and invest in my business. So I actually did, you know, I was able to at least see the writing on the wall as things were, were showing up. So I got kind of a head start and I literally ended up um, getting a new job within 30 days. But I'm also a career coach, so there's that. But there is this part about like not being in inertia and kind of mm -hmm. pushing past kind of all those negative self talk that you have. The other thing I did was I took my severance and I invested in a business coach. Um, I, best, I invested in a premium program and it's already paid off in that I'm, I'm launching my new program for nonprofit women. And it's because I've been working with her since October that has actually given me that fuel to both hold the day job and to also invest in my business because my long-term goal is to be able to actually be working for myself independently in the next three years. And I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't an urgency about it. I got a little bit too comfortable, those golden handcuffs. And I really started to see that you cannot just put all your eggs in one basket around your job. And so while I have definitely um, had a lot of things to be proud of in my career as a coach and a small business owner. Um, I had to get, you know, it's like that frog in the in the water and the heat just keeps getting turned up. You know, so I had it's like I had to get a little bit more external support. And as a coach, they always say coaches need coaches. And so it was a great investment. And it also creates this space for me now where I have the day job that is very demanding but I set clear boundaries around it because I have that true north of uh, my long-term purpose. Yes, yes. And I think uh, uh, Nyella speaks of that North Star in her quote, you have to have that North Star. So you speaking, able, you and Arun are able to speak from a very personal, I've been there, I did this point of view, which is, which is totally priceless, totally. Wow. Maggie Georgiopoulos, what do you say, global traveler? <laughs> um, it is an interesting um, thing to look at, uh, particularly from a global perspective, because different countries have been impacted in different manners. Um, sitting in Vietnam has been quite interesting for me because we had a very short closed down period 
uh, the government got onto things very quickly. So whilst there was a period where people lost work and there was a period of time where people were uncertain about things, things um, changed back to, I, I suppose, a, a more understandable norm quite quickly. Yet at the same time, most of my contacts, um, a lot of the people that I work with and a lot of the work that I did internationally kind of changed because um, I do a, a lot of speaking and obviously the pandemic uh, removed the face-to-face -face aspects of that. A lot of that ended up virtual, um, you know, needing to adapt your business to that. So um, it, it became an interesting prospect, um, particularly from a, a women's perspective, if you had a family, on how you adapted all of those things in relation to um, you know, what your role in the family was, if you have a partner, what your partner's role in, whether it is in with a traditional family unit or you know, the, the different family units we're finally seeing becoming more acknowledged these days, how all of that balances. And I think that regardless of where we are, all of that becomes a question of you know, where we are with mindset. Everyone's mentioned this at the moment, you know, it's mindset, you know, how you think about it, trying not to fall into that rut or track of there's something wrong with me that caused this to happen, as opposed to looking at the fact that there's a bigger picture here. Um, you know, some of the, you know, best, the best are impacted by this. This has got nothing to do with you as an individual. It is a set of circumstances that you can't control. It's about, you know, focusing on what you can control how you work that and how you move forward with that. Wow, that's, a, that's something that you would say. What's wrong with my mic? It's something that you would speak of uh, Vietnam and, and how quickly the government jumped on to what was happening. So the impact is not as solemn as it is as here in the States. I, I hear you say, uh, you, you jogged something else in me also. We'll come back to an, another question that I have. Let me hear Tracy L. James, what say you, dear lady? Well, you know, I have the, ex <laughs> I guess you could say, I, I'm going to call it a blessing in the fact that I survived three layoffs long before the pandemic ever happened. I was deep in corporate America in the midst of the WorldCom scandal, the Enron scandal, and those weren't the only companies that were impacted because it impacted the stock market, which impacts any public company. And the minute stock prices start to drop, they start downsizing. And I got downsized three times in about between six to seven years. And so one of the lessons I learned in that is that it's not about you. It's not about your capabilities. It's about what's happening around you. And that's the thing where you have to shift it outside of yourself and be willing to pivot, to make a change and do something different. Do something you never thought you would do. I ended up working in different industries. I went from working in the meat industry to working in the beauty industry <laughs> to working in the computer industry. You know, so I had to be willing and be open to new job opportunities. And in respect to last year, my business, I had to pivot. A huge piece of my business is live events. And I actually have a, in a segment of my business where I do event management. So I lost a bunch of events last year. So I had to pivot and shift in to doing virtual events. So sometimes that's the thing for us is really to get our mindset right. And my mantra, solutions, not excuses. You can't use the excuse of the pandemic anymore. You can't use the excuse of, you know, I've lost my job. Those are realities, but the excuse is when you hold on to it and you turn and you decide to play victim, okay? When you use excuses, it's a self-defeating prophecy that you are pulling into yourself. Don't do that. <laughs> you are capable, you're intelligent. And so I encourage you, if you've dealt with this, I want you to focus on your strengths. What do you do well? And if you can't see it yourself, this is where your network comes in. 
the people you surround yourself with. Ask someone, hey, what do I really do well? So that you can leverage your strengths to get through this period. And <clears throat> I'm the person that had to deal with the gaps you were talking about. I had to deal with it. I had multiple gaps. In one period, it was three months. Another was like six to eight months. And, and then after the last one, I had a gap for like two years. So it was like a huge shift for me to try and come back into the workforce. And that's actually part of the reason I became an entrepreneur. It wasn't by choice. I realized I was like, well, maybe God's trying to tell me something because, you know, <laughs> three layoffs. Yeah. So I had to make that decision. So ultimately, it's about keeping your mindset open and being focused and seeking these solutions. Maybe your solution is a full time job in a different industry. Maybe the mm -hmm. solution is starting your own business. Maybe the solution is going to work for another small business owner. You know, Tracy, open and willing. That brings me around to that thing of I see everyone speaking of mindset. Whatever happens, don't take ownership that of, of own it on your shoulders that something was wrong with me. They let Sally stay and I'm gone, or I can't get another job because I'm over 40 years old, or a myriad of things. The other thing that I hear you all say is that. We have choices, according to Naella, we have choices. We can go for a job. We can tell them to go for a job. We can go them, tell them to search for a career, be selective and choose a career. Now is a fabulous time to get into a, your cooperation or you can build your own. So who wants to jump in there and for, just the, the person who's been with a major corporate corporation for the longest. How will you approach that person? We may even have somebody who's listening. How do you steer their drive? How do you guide them between these three different places where they can choose or where they're, where they're going to end up? Just, I know I'm opening this up to anyone who wants to tackle that question. So I, I can I can talk about this because it's one of the things I love is reinvention and career change and really getting people to open up because the other thing that's cool about an interruption is it, it creates a pause. It creates space for you to evaluate and to think differently because a lot of the clients that I work with, a lot of people that I see are so busy on that hamster wheel that they can't even like have enough breath and you know and they're falling in the bed at night and so the the idea of having the creativity to even think about other possibilities is very difficult so one of the things i love to do is to really spend some time going within with people so some questions i would have is what brings you joy what could you do for hours and hours without even, you know, like you look up and it's three hours later. That's a clue to something that is important to investigate. There's also the, the issue of what is it that you've always wanted to do that you said no to yourself? I actually said no to myself about becoming a coach. Like in 30 seconds, I, I tell the story a lot, we talked about it, um, but it's, so that's the self-defeating negative self-talk can stop us in our tracks before we even get started. So really doing some time to think about the what ifs, what's possible. And there's a lot more that's possible if we allow ourselves to really think through the strategies. And, and the last thing I'll say, and then we'll now, lots of other great minds here is to push past fear. Fear is one of the things that can stop us cold. We start thinking about what could go wrong and what's, you know, what I don't have or what I can't do or what I don't know or things like that. And what I always ask my clients are, what's the worst that could happen? Because once you start actually walking down that path and then you actually answer the question and really think about it and like, okay, and then what? And then what? Because it's really like, when you really think about the worst that can happen, it's actually recoverable. I mean, look at Tracy. She, you know, 
recovered from three job losses in a very short period of time. Everything is figure outable and everything is recoverable. So if we actually remove that big hairy monster of failure, then we actually can step into a, a space of exploration. And Marco, you said the word curiosity and really kind of really think in, in a lot of different ways about what's possible. And there's a lot more that's possible than we even give ourselves credit for thinking about. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, that, that is so true because one of the things that I've come to realize is that the things that the what ifs we go through they never happen. And because I've gotten past my what ifs and all the things I was really afraid of happening, those were the things that didn't happen. Some things happened that weren't expected or not necessarily good, but I got through them. So whenever you're faced with fear, I want you to think about the last time you were afraid and realize you got here, you got through it, you got past it somehow, some way you were able to move forward. So look at the fear, embrace it, accept the fact that it's going to be there and be courageous enough to move despite the fear. I'd like to add on uh, to both Trina and Tracy's point, because I think Margaret, you and I talked about that, that fear of failure and about redefining what failure means. That's that's a big word it has always held such a negative connotation and that's something I've I've kind of gone through and I've come to realize that if you define failure as a stopping point no, no, not the end but an iteration a chance to iterate reflect and do better that means it's kind of it's a process it's not the end right and uh kind of going back to Trina because I, I I was kind of reflecting on everything you said, even with my journey, when my job came to an end, it was like, let me try this. So let me try launch the business. Let me try the podcast. You know, I had zero experience and I said, let me try it. And I, it's something I enjoy. I do it. And I I've found purpose in it, but unless you kind of experiment. So that's a big thing, like coming from an IT background, experiment, see what happens. Innovation comes out of experimenting and having that open mind. So being open to change, it kind of comes back to. I'm thinking, Monica, you know about this big quantum leap. Uh, you know, you so had a business, data and uh, the, what was it, data and tech? And technology and accounting, right? And yeah, and then you made this huge leap. Talk about that because there are a lot of people that are reinventing. I mean, what you're doing now is like uh, apples and oranges almost. It is, it is. I love what you said about trading in the suit for lipstick. Um, that's what I did, trade in the suit for the lipstick and just um, don't be afraid. What Aruna said, don't be afraid to experiment with things and try different things. I think that's a thread that's going through the whole conversation here. Experimenting and being resilient. I'm sure Maggie can talk about resilience in, in the mental health area. Just build that resilience into your network and um, dream. Just dream about what you want to do. You have skills. You have power within yourself that, like, Naila said, I don't think that we all realize the power that we have within ourselves, that we can just dig deep and go for those dreams that we have and um, just get past that fear. I even had a fear of success at one point when I had the accounting and technology firm. I thought, well, you know, we're doing really well here. What if, what if I'm so successful that my husband is you know, intimidated by this? What if I'm so successful that my partner, who is my father, is intimidated by this? And you have to get past those things too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, that's, all these are wonderful points. Nayella, you coming from serving our country, and thank you so much for your service. Serving our country, now moving into the political arena, what do you have to say to a person making that type of leap, that type of re-entry? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think it's important that we as women learn to not 
see our value rooted in our jobs and to understand the difference between our jobs and our work. And for me, my jobs have changed at least 20 times throughout my career. But my work, for the most part, has stayed consistent. And that has always been my North Star. And I think that in the society that we live in, you know, without getting into all, you know, the political science of this capitalism, and it's all about production and producing value, uh, which is, yes, very true. But as we live our lives, you know, as women, you know, um, trying to live our lives, um, trying to raise families or just trying to, you know, launch our businesses. You know, I think it's very easy, unfortunately, to get caught up in my work and my value is in this title that I hold on a two by three index card with my name and title on it. And when that's taken away from us, we feel a profound sense of loss because we have lost an identity that has been so core to who we are, how we define ourselves and present ourselves to the world. When in reality, um, and we're doing, you know, I think the, 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 the exercise daily of self-awareness, our work is what drives us. Mm -hmm. And I think for the women who are coming back after layoffs or multiple layoffs or gaps of several years because they wanted to raise a family or to take care of a sick family member or they wanted to take a sabbatical. I have taken a sabbatical before, right? Um, but I had gone through that process of reintroducing myself fully knowing, securely rooted in my purpose that um, my introduction to the world is not an organization. It is not my title. It is not what's on my business card. It is my purpose. It is why I am in this shared space with you on how we connect and build something together when our North Stars are aligned with one another to work in deep partnership with you. And that will take me past 15, 20, 25 jobs. It will take me past decades of not just a career, but of a life with work that reflects my purpose. And I would just, again, want to again, reiterate that to the women who have those gaps uh, for whatever those reasons may be, because quite frankly, those reasons don't matter, right? But to understand the difference between the job and the work that we hold and how we can really focus on moving deeper into the work that we are called to do or the work that we choose to do. Um, and to me, that is the mindset that makes all the difference. Mindset. Here we are with mindset. Oh, I am on fire with what I'm hearing here. Oh, this is so good. Goodness. I'm going to jump over to Maggie Georgiopoulos because Maggie, I think that you can shed light on another mindset that women have when we are, um, when we are moving into where we are here in corporate America. You come from the C-suite. You are an advocate for mental health and in the workplace. So what do you say to a person, a woman who wants to go back to corporate America? Or perhaps she's found that company that is what she feels is worthy of herself. But I think in our conversation, you made mention, check how progressive they are as far as mental health goes. Am I re remembering that co correctly? Because we have to understand that that environment is good for our mental health. That's what I'm, I want to hear from you. You're on mute. Sorry, me too. It is really important um, to, to actually check that because quite often um, we, we read the, the media, we listen to the news, we listen to podcasts, we listen to conversations like this. And what we hear is we hear a progressive story, a story that says that we're accepting the fact that everybody has mental health, that mental health is an important aspect of an individual and it's something that we need to look after and it is something that organisations will as a result, look after. And many organizations make the sounds or the noises and um, 
you know, you referred a, an article to me um, that I had a brief look at before this that talked about the disparity between the C-suite feeling that like, you know, something like about 95% or 99% of the C-suite felt that they had mental health handled, they understood it, they looked after it, they, they were advocates to it, whereas uh, I've, I've I actually still a fairly strong percentage if you think about it because it was in the 60s of the employees felt that no that was you know that wasn't necessarily the case um they didn't necessarily feel that um that support was there and this is this is a continued um story whether it be about mental health whether it be about diversity in the workplace whether it be about a lot of things a lot of companies are very good at putting a poster on the wall uh, creating a nice little tick box, um, you know, going through this lovely checklist and going, yay, we're all about mental health or yay, we're all about diversity and inclusion. Look, see, we've got that person that looks different over there in the corner. See, we've got it. Um, and, and it is about a checklist. And unfortunately, um, it, it's something that you can get trapped into when you're you're in that, that um, position as well, because it becomes almost a story of checklists you know are we on the right financial path do we have the right people in place do we and we keep thinking about checklists and we forget that people don't fit into nicely defined little boxes and part of the reason things work is because people don't fit into nicely defined little boxes so it is important that you do check that it's not just a picture on a wall and a list of things that the company is saying that the company really does truly believe and truly live the values that they say that they have. Um, and that goes for everything. It's not just for mental health. It's all about things because one of the things that will often happen when we're in a job that we end up feeling um, literally sick to the stomach about is quite often what happens is there's a mismatch between what our values are and what we believe the corporate values are um, and the corporate yeah. might be saying that they're doing one thing but in actuality they're doing something different so that's why it is very important to check because we're all very good at checking little lists I mean we're all written CVs that make us look wonderful even though we don't necessarily agree with that you know, the, the company image is no different. It's something that's created in order to make the company look wonderful. Whether or not the company actually adheres to that or is that is another matter. And, and you need to check that. I, I'm glad that I was I'm glad to have brought that up. I don't know what this feedback is coming from. I'm glad to have brought that up because it's very, very important. It's something that we usually usually don't think about the mental health the state of the environment that we are working in where we are going but towards the end of my days in corporate it became very very important so thank you maggie for sharing this my next thought is so for some these are the best of days these are the worst of days it just all depends on who you're speaking to when we are working with women who are beside us, we are mentoring those behind us, I want each one of you all to take a moment and just tell everyone what piece of legacy do you want to leave, taking a look at where we've been, where you've been as an individual, what piece of information do you want to leave with women who are listening, who are flanking our sides, who are in back of us, those who are watching us every day. I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to go first. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a lesson that's really, really embedded in me because uh, as I've shared, I've gone through a journey like from, I like to call from despair to hope. So experiencing depression and really becoming who I am today. Uh, and it, I can just summarize, and I think that was the quote that was ended up uh, being used, which was, we own our destiny, right? And it's, we have full control of how our life goes forward. And it starts again, it kind of comes back to mindset. And it's, you can regulate it from the very first thought that comes in your head and you can guide that thought to how you want to act how you want that how you want your actions to become 
your habits and personality and ultimately your destiny. So I just want people to believe that it starts with you. So it's never about that person. I need to depend on that person. I need that person to validate this. It's great to have support, but it starts with you and you have full control. I'd like to piggyback on that. And just the, the thing that I would like to leave with women is you are a strong and beautiful woman and no one can take that away from you. And what you're saying, Aruna, is so true. That's It starts with you and it is you. No one can make you feel diminished without your permission. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I often find myself sharing with my younger sisters is that we can do it. We can do it together. But before we can even do it together, we have to decide for ourselves that we have what it takes inside of us. We have what we need to accomplish the purpose we were placed here to accomplish. We have it. We just have to accept that we have it and not allow other people's words, other people's actions to cause us to doubt who we were created to be. So my legacy is helping women live the life they were created to live. Be it being that corporate raider that's just running up the corporate ladder or be it the entrepreneur that's building the multi-million dollar businesses that are hiring women and treating them and paying them what they should be paid. And that to me it is really, really huge. And it comes from embracing your strengths and who you really are and being authentic in that space. Yeah, um, for me, and just it's kind of like to piggyback on what everyone is saying, the word that keeps coming up for me is freedom. Because I think a lot of what stops us and it's, you know, each person has touched upon the, those limiting beliefs, the circumstances, the victim mentality, the um, things that you haven't seen or been exposed to in your life. And, you know, we were talking, Marco, when we spoke about the, the frailty of life. That's one of the things that this past year has shown us is that tomorrow isn't promised. And so we can, you know, we can play that game about someday I'm going to, you know, do this. And when the X, Y, Z circumstances are right, then, then I can not, then embrace my dream. But the truth of the matter is that we only have today. And so we can really look, I, we can only look, you know, in, into the future. And if we actually aren't willing to take that step to face the fears, to embrace our worth, to stop caring. And this is, I have this in my book, what they think. It's like that, that tyranny of the they, you know, who are these people, they, that, <laughs> that are controlling us, you know? But it's really, if we are able to free ourselves from all of these things, these things that are in our brains that keep us from really going from it, that keep us from, from really seeing our brilliance, our worth, our beauty, and that we are worthy of joy, peace, love, serenity, and work that it fulfills us and lights us up and doesn't make you feel like you're going into a dungeon every day when it's time to go to work. All of those things, it's all it comes back to freedom. And so for me, part of it is really helping to unlock that for people so that they can actually explore even bigger possibilities. I would add, um, you know, I think like I would like my legacy and what I try to tell my mentees is to um, have the courage to write their own stories. I think to build off of, you know, some of the things that have been said here in terms of the pivot, in terms of freedom, um, in terms of mindset, you know, life, you know, in a lot of ways is about how we react to the things that come in our direction. Um, and especially as women, um, especially for women of color, you know, 
we we have to have the courage and belief in ourselves to not let those things happen that other people do to us, that organizations do to us, to be the narrative that defines who we are and how we show up in this life that we live. Um, and the power of writing your own story, using your own words on our own terms. Um, again, I think it's just an exercise of self agency that oftentimes we don't realize that we have the power to have. Um, and so for me, that is what I try to do with my mentees and with the women who I happen to share space with. Bad things happen, painful things happen. And to Trina's point, joyful things happen. Moments of profound happiness happen. And we get to choose how we internalize and process and reflect that into the world with the people that we surround ourselves with in the space that we choose to share uh, um, our work with. Um, and so that is, you know, I hope to be my legacy is, you know, that I, again, help remind women that no matter what happens, tell the world on your own terms, your story, because nobody, but nobody knows your story like you. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with a lot of what has been said here. And there is a real theme that's coming through this. And this is this idea that we are our own unique individual people. And to stop trying to measure ourselves or judge ourselves by a set of rules or norms that has come from where? Who? Who decided that, that they were right or that was what they needed to be? Um, to, to me, the big thing is there, there is no such thing as normal. You are normal. You are your normal. Um, you judge against your normal. It's your set of rules. It's your set of values. And as long as they aren't going against the general laws of society, i.e. we're not turning into psychopaths, um, then those normals should be celebrated. And I, I believe that one of the big things that we need to come to and that, that has come out in this is that we need to speak up. We need to be proud of who we are individually. We need to be proud of of our victories and our losses or our failures or whatever we want to call those um, because each individual one of those things are a step on the path of who you are right now and one of the things I really believe in and will often answer in is I will never change anything about my life between when I was born to now because everything that has happened to me has made me the person I am right now and that is the person I really love. Um, and as long as you can hold on to that, then you have a valuable, powerful individual that can do whatever you set your mind to. And I think that's something that we really need to take forward and, and grasp hold of. I am in love with everything that was said. If, if the listeners and those for days after this recording goes out into the world, if people don't find that one thing to grab onto that's gonna pull them into their next, I don't know what will, because what just happened here over this last hour is phenomenal. Women, all of you are overlapping in different ways. I mean, different industries, but the theme is the same. I've been there, I've done that. I can identify with what this subject is all about. And you women, care, it matters to you all that women do need assistance. They're looking for coaches. They're looking for role models. They're looking for someone who's not going to judge them, but who's going to say, I've been there. Someone who's going to say, choose that company that you go to. You choose that company. Don't you let it choose you. Mm -hmm. So what I hear from you ladies is that the pandemic brought in a new norm. Now we need to work that new norm according to our rules. That's what I hear you ladies say. So if you're out of the workforce or something has happened, work the new norm according to your rules. Give yourself permission. Is that what I hear everyone say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So now the final question, and I want everyone to chime in. How do we keep these conversations going? How do we keep force feeding power and energy and insight and you can do this. How do we get this out 
on a continual basis? Anybody, just jump in. I want to hear from everybody, though. Yeah, I was thinking about this because I was thinking about this um, incredible uh, set of programming that Lamel has put together. Margo, you and Gilia, um, you know, harnessing the voices of the 20, 25 women and highlighting us in different ways. And this is, you know, it's just like, you know, I'm a black woman. So black, you know, we say Black History Month isn't just February, it's all year round. Same thing. You know, like we can each, and it's really about, um, I had the um, great opportunity to see Issa Rae speak last night. And um, gosh, she's she's powerful and she's just as like cool and, and like everyday person, but she also is strategic. And then she kept talking about, she wants to lift while she climbs. And so that's, that's, the, that's really what it's all about. It's like a person to person being that change that we want to see in the world and, and leaving no one behind. And so if we, as a woman, if we can challenge, like if everybody here were to say, it's my goal to touch the life of maybe two other women in this next seven days. And then we, we were to challenge that. And remember that movie, Pay It Forward, from like years ago, um, so we could pay that forward and we can, we can actually create like this shockwave of positivity that can just keep going. Yeah, I agree with you, Trina. Um, absolutely. Um, my goal as I'm working with my clients and especially my women clients is to be the mentor I always wanted, mm -hmm. you know, and I had not so great experiences in corporate America with female bosses. Um, and it was a mixture of, they didn't speak up for me when I needed them to speak up for me, down to the one that would throw me under the bus if it meant she could protect herself from the wrath that was coming from her boss. And so for me, as I am out, as I'm working, my intent is to make a positive impact. You know, that ripple effect. How big of a ripple do you want to make? How much of an impact? What is your legacy going to be? And I, once I'm gone, I want people to talk about me like they talked about my grandmother, about the fact that she was always there. She was always helpful. She supported people with whatever she had. And I want people to see me in that space. I was placed here to serve. I'm, I intend to leave here empty. I would like to say like, uh, very similar to Trina, what I had wrote down for this was <clears throat> lead by example. So I haven't had many people to sort of model after. And I'm gonna talk about like being an Indian woman. I haven't seen many people, Indian women authors or Indian podcasters. And I'm really happy to be that representation, right? So uh, for an Indian woman to say that, hey, an Indian woman is doing this and not just Indian women, but, but a lot of people in my friend circle, I feel like I have inspired because they feel like, oh, she's not JK Rowling. Maybe I can write a book too. So people in my network just, you know, reached out and say, hey, I would like to write a book. Can, can you give me guidance? So it's making it seem possible for other people that have not entertained it because it seems so far away. So being able to make myself visible, show that, hey, things are possible and also reaching out to them and being that support, collaborating, connecting and, and just showing that things are possible no matter what you are, you don't have. JK Rowling was also like every one of us. There was nothing different about her and she made it up there. But, you know, I, people tend to think that things are impossible, but showing people that, normal people like every one of us can do special things so um i guess that's what uh, i would say i hear you uh maggie i'm gonna bring you in because i understand that you're on a you have to 
We have to get you in right now. So come on in, Maggie Georgiopoulos, and then we'll have Monica and Nayella uh, close us out. I think we have um, something like 10, five minutes or something like that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. No, um, I, it's not actually as tight as I thought it was. I got my time slightly wrong, but it's still good. Uh, my big thing is, uh, I, and it still comes back to that, be you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an unapologetically me. Um, I, I speak from the heart. I am, am happy to share the fact that I'm bipolar and just because I'm bipolar doesn't mean that um, I'm going to suddenly go crazy on you or do weird things or do, you know, all of those things. Because by being you, by sharing you, um, people learn more. Because at the moment, a lot of what happens is pure ignorance that has been passed down from generation to generation because we've been told that um, a certain colour of skin means something or that a, a certain disorder means something. And none of it's true. And the only way we can dispel this is by speaking out and proving that it's otherwise. Um, and I agree. I, you know, my role model when I talk about it is somebody that everyone goes, oh, my God, how can you like her? And it's like, well... When I grew up, it was the only person that was physically visible um, to, to actually see. And I mean, she was called the Iron Lady for, you know, crying out loud. Um, you know, Margaret Thatcher was not seen as a wonderful person, but I saw a woman stand in her power and unapologetically stand in front of the world and say, I'm happy to lead. That's what we need to do. We need to stand in our own power and don't apologise for who you are. Who you are is amazing, it's wonderful, share that, be that. And, you know, yeah, you're going to have haters, but don't focus on them. Focus on the people that will celebrate with you. And that's how we're going to make change happen. And the people here that are, are contributing to this are all part of that journey. Monica, let's hear from you. And then uh, yeah. Nayla, uh, I, Nayla, I, let's close us out, please. I changed careers because I wanted to be in more of the conversation. That's really where I was. Margot, you and I talked about the male dominated workplaces that I worked in. And um, with my own business, I was serving male owned businesses and wasn't talking to women. I wanted to impact women owned businesses, but I was the my town is a very manufacturing town, very male owned businesses mostly. And I just wasn't impacting women the way I wanted to. So here's this Mary Kay opportunity that I just joined on a whim. And the, um, the motto or the mission of the company is empowering women and their families around the world. And I get to do that through makeup. I mean, women wear makeup. We want to feel beautiful. We want to look beautiful. But I get to do that just sitting and talking with them. I had a wonderful career conversation with a young woman from Chicago. We were doing a Zoom makeover and I said, what's your dream job? And she just opened up to me. And that's the kind of conversations I think we all get to have when we're working with women. I loved what you said, Trina, about reaching out to two women this week. It, it reminded me of that old um, shampoo commercial. You tell, you tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on. Pretty soon we're just, we have a movement going on. Um, I will answer this uh, by sharing two of my favorite quotes. Um, the question of how do we keep this conversation going about how we as women um, can be stronger together um, and connect and build um, towards something amazing. Um, so the first quote is um, by Gandhi, my life is my message. And I, I'm sharing that because, um, you know, you never know who's watching. And there have been so many times in my life when I have just been living my life, making my decisions as I make them. Um, and somebody will reach out um, seemingly randomly and just say, hey, you know, I didn't know that this was possible until I saw you do it. Um, thank you for being that example. And I was making these decisions, not thinking that my intention is going to be a role model or to be an inspiration. I'm honored and deeply humbled that I am able to serve that role. But I was living my life and making my decisions rooted in my purpose, following my North Star. And in me doing that, I was giving permission 
for other people to follow their North Star as well. Um, and so to keep these conversations going, let our lives be a reflection of what is possible so that when we break those glass ceilings and break down those doors, that we are not the only ones in those rooms and we are not the only ones at the top of the ladder. Um, and I will also close out with um, a quote that really moved me. Um, it comes from Oprah Winfrey. Um, and she was telling this story, um, uh, she was in the kitchen with Maya Angelou and Oprah Winfrey was telling Maya Angelou, Dr. Maya Angelou, um, you know, about, she was really excited because she was doing something amazing and she was telling Dr. Maya Angelou, I'm so excited, this is gonna be my legacy, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and this is gonna be my legacy. And Dr. Maya Angelou stopped Oprah Winfrey in her kitchen and she said, no. Your legacy is not A, B, and C. Your legacy, your legacy is every life that you will ever touch. And the moment she said it, it gave me chills because to keep this conversation going, it is to understand that we are touching lives with our knowledge and without our knowledge. And that the way that we live our lives rooted in our purpose, following our truth, doing the work that we were called to do. There are so many women that we don't know about who come across our work, right? And it's not just the accolades and the achievements, but it is also like the smaller, more intimate, hard moments that don't make the newspaper feature articles, right? That don't make it to the evening news, right? Women are watching us. And the conversation continues when we live our lives the best way that we can, truly holding onto our purpose and letting that be the light that we live our lives by. That is how the conversation continues, by allowing our life to be the message and by touching countless lives that we may not ever be aware of, but that we are doing so because we are being authentic to our purpose that we are being authentic to ourselves and that we are not chasing jobs and organizations. We are not climbing the rungs of the ladder just to climb them, but because we are following our North Star. I believe that is how we continue this conversation. I again applaud each one of you ladies. Oh, I'm speechless and that's hard to, to render me speechless. You ladies are fabulous. Miguelia, do you wanna come in with a word or shall I close it out? I don't know what to do right now. I am overflowing with, I, I'm heck, you know, you get to the place where you have to stop taking notes. Just put the pen down. All you can do is get the, get the uh, recording when it comes out and apply what these women have given us. This is not hearsay hashed over information. This is relevant right now information that makes a difference. It will change your very life. Thank you for letting me be the moderator today. Thank you for letting me have conversation with each and every one of you fabulous women changing lives. Ah, oh, Nayella, women are watching us. They're hoping to meet us. Oh, okay, I'm finished. Oh my goodness. Nigelia, shall I close it out? What do I do right now? I don't know. I wanna tell you, keep it going, but I know everyone have things to do. So we have to close it out. And I really don't not know what, I don't know what to say because everyone just touched me in every single way they possibly can. And I'm just grateful to have you all. And I appreciate it for taking your time to, to be here and for always support Womel and for always supporting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This Thank really you for... lifted me. I love being in spaces like this mm -hmm. and truly a pleasure to meet each of you. And I know we'll all be in touch. And Marco, you're just, and Agilia, you both are just fabulous. So thank yeah. you for doing Thank it. you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I guess this concludes the day two of the panel discussions. She's possible. And if we don't understand by now, she's possible. You're going to have to listen again. I want to say thank you, Nayella. 
Amaru, Aruna Krishnan, Trina Ramsey, Tracy L. James, I'm almost in tears, Monica Glenny, and Maggie Georgiopoulos. Fabulous, fabulous ladies. Thank you. God bless and take care. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.